Okay. So I'm going to begin with a brief introduction. So my name is Michaela Castellanos. I'm Colombian. And um, I did my bachelor's in electronics engineering and physics here in University of Lisbon. Then I did a master's in physics. And then I went on an Erasmus mundus to Munich. So I went to Prague to do a master's in, in mathematics. And then I stayed there a bit longer to do a PhD in geophysics. And now I'm living in London. So I've been living there for, for a little over two years and a half. And um, today I'm going to share with you a little bit about what it was like living, especially, I'm going to talk about first about the masters and then about the PhD. So yes, as I mentioned, just between 2008 and 2010, I got a scholarship from Erasmus Mundus. If, you, if you, you've never heard of it, please look it up. So I ended up in Nice, which is south of France, a very nice place, sunny, blue skies, it's very pretty. And um, English was the main language, so all the courses were taught in English, and you know, um, everybody that helped us with housing and stuff like that was mainly in English. So it was pretty easy, well, at least for me to get along because people had to know how to, how to speak English. It was a very, the group, we were from 22 different countries, so it was a very, very uh, like new experience for me. Uh, sorry. So when you're around people from 22 different countries, you realize, and here, here's a spoiler alert, that you're not as good in geography or history as you thought you were. So you know, like maybe the, during the first week, for example, this guy comes up to me and he tells me, "Oh, where are you from?" So I tell him, "No, I'm from Colombia." He's like, "Oh, yeah, are you from Bogota?" And he seemed to, you know, knew, you know, knew about South America and Colombia. And I asked him, where are you from? And he says, I'm from Lesotho. And I'm like, okay. And then, you know, do any of you know where Lesotho is, for example? Do you say? It's in Africa, mm -hmm. yes. And actually, it's in Africa, inside South Africa. So this is just for like, people like me that have never heard about this before. Lesotho is that little country that's inside South Africa. So it, yes, it is a country inside a country. So you know, if things like this were coming up every single day when you were talking with somebody and they were sharing a little bit about their past or their city, things I personally didn't have and I never heard about. Okay, I'm not even gonna get started on you know cities and capitals and things like that. And also you, you start to wonder like, okay, maybe I didn't really pay attention to my history classes as much as I should have. So a little crash course in history, Yugoslavia split up and then part of it, Serbia and Montenegro, Montenegro became a country, that was in 1990. And then in 2006, they split up again and they became two independent countries. So in, this, in, this, um, in our program, there was a guy that was from Serbia and a girl that was from Montenegro, and you know, they were born in the 1980s, and this was a real thing for them. And you know, it was, it was, it was so real that it actually, you know, made me wonder, like, where have I been all this time? You know, what, you know, it was only two years ago that they had become two new countries. And yeah, I mean, they, everybody was so passionate about this debate that I felt like I kind of like missed an episode in history. I don't know, I was watching Friends or something. I don't know what happened there. So then, Okay, after the masters were finished, I, like I said, I stayed in France and I did my PhD. And this was a completely different experience because now um, I was under a, a French government scholarship and I was in, a, in an institution where, you know, there were several foreign students, and, but the majority were just French speakers, you know, other Europeans, so everything was mainly French. And, well, English is definitely not the main language. It's the main language, of course, if you want to put on a read papers or if you're going to have a scientific kind of um, conversation or conference. But you know, during lunch breaks and um, coffee, or you know, over, over some more parties, what they call soirees, just even small talk in the corridors, it was all in French. So basically, I was like, you know, this was my space all the time, and there are some good points to. You know, there, there are some pros, I guess. 
um, looking back, you know, you learn to be a good listener because you, you, know, you really don't have a choice. You, your imagination really goes wild. So, you know, people use words and then you associate them towards you. Think you understand, but they mean completely different things. So, you know, people talk about beasts and things like that. Turns out, like in French, that word is actually insect. But, you know, I was like, why now do they always talk about beasts here? Is it? And so it was, it was, it's good. You also develop some, you know, very good um, spy skills. So, you, that, you know, you, you become really good at reading body language and even, even lip reading. So, you know, like, uh, you might even want to apply for a spy kind of job. And after several months, of course, and maybe a year or so, and some frustration, you start to actually, huh, did, you know, did I really just understand what you said? Did, did you really just say what I think you said? Uh, okay, sometimes it was it wasn't, but yeah. And again, I think you, when you start when you finally start speaking another language, you really have to think before you speak, and actually, it's not all that bad. I had never tried it before, and it was actually working. You say less, less dumb things, and you become, you know, you become more precise, and your arguments are shorter, and you just want to make the point and get it done with, and that's also a good thing. So I guess in summary, I would say I had like two, two, even though I was all the time in France, I had like two split kind of experiences. So during the the Erasmus Mundi. So during my master's, it was more like a multicultural experience. So it was a, it was very enriching. It was, it was good to notice that most things that we do, like, say, think, you know, our principles, they're more like acquired tastes and habits more than anything else. We become used to certain things, and it was a, it's a great opportunity for cultural exchange. Like I mentioning before, and the world really needs that. I think I also did my share of sharing, you know, Colombian history, and, and you, you, you do value your culture and your language and your music and your traditions and your food because you have to explain to people what they are and why they are the way they are, and so that, that gives you another perspective. And then during the PhD, since like I told you it was like a, a, a different experience to get because I actually had to live another, I had to actually learn another language from zero. I would say it was like learning another language was actually like just living another life. It's like you were actually reborn, okay, a little bit older, yeah, reborn at 25. But um, but it is it is like being born into, into another life. And there are things that you couldn't do if you don't really speak the language. So there are things like, for example, you can't go to theater with people as they are, without them having to translate into another language to try to explain to you where they're coming from. And when you, I guess, living abroad, and, and if you already speak the language, then you start to become a part of the, of the daily life, of the tiny little issues of the you know, the road sign that appeared to be missing this morning and, you know, all those tiny little things that kind of build a community and and you get to understand people and how they grew up and what worries them and what doesn't. And I guess the way I would describe it is that you become part of like a bigger family. You, you really feel a part of something else. So you don't stop being what you were before, it's just it just it grows bigger. So it's a very positive experience, and I think you never really know where you're headed, and you don't know you don't know where you're gonna end up. You don't know what's you know you don't know what's around the corner. But but it's 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 worth the travel, and of course everybody has their own journey, and everybody has their own you know interests, so that will drive you to different places. And that's what actually makes it very exciting. So yeah, that's it. <laughs>